this um, water or is yeah. this? No, it's water. Are you pregnant? Today, Ashley keeps her pregnancy quiet in the Potomac finale. The Kardashians are back with more drama and another blowout party. I'm just trying to be mature and put my to the side. I don't need Kim's extra shit. And Chef Ben is here to break it all down. Plus, former Bachelorette Rachel Lindsay will be telling us about her new show, Ghosted. You said that she was the reason that he left. It sounds like he left on his own free will. This is your reality check. Do you really think that's a good idea? What's up, everybody? Happy Monday. It is a brand new week, and we are getting you going the only way we know how with more reality. I'm your host, Lindsay Rodriguez. Welcome to Reality Check. Today, I am joined by People's Bravo expert Dave Quinn, our very good friend, and Chef Ben Robinson from Below Deck Mediterranean. How are you, boys? <laughs> Good. Very well, thank you. Yeah, I see that exciting. we all got the blue memo today. So <laughs> all feeling yeah. very thank blue. you for showing up in accordance with uh, what <laughs> I wanted you to wear. Later on in the show, I'm going to be joined by Rachel Lindsay and Travis Mills. They'll be talking about their new MTV show, which is all about ghosting. Spooky. Ooh. Not that kind of ghosting, unfortunately. Oh. The kind where you're left wondering what the hell you did wrong. <laughs> More on that later. Right now, though, it is time for our top five. At number five, Adam and Danielle Busby of TLC's Outdoored are committed to raising their quintuplets as individuals, even if that means splitting them up in school. The Busbys are standing by their decision to enroll Riley in kindergarten ahead of her sisters, who started preschool this year, despite receiving backlash from social media mommy shamers. Adam responded by saying, it's just crazy that somebody out there is criticizing us about something they have no idea about. So, guys, what is your take on the whole Instagram parenting police thing? Well, I was just talking about this with Ben before we even got in here, that, like, the Internet is just such a small population of the real world that you can't really take these sorts of comments as reality, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. I wouldn't turn to perfect strangers who I have no idea who they are and expect them to tell me what to do. Yeah. I don't think anybody should listen to them. Uh, I agree. What about you, Ben? I mean, yeah, absolutely. Time, being in the public eye. I have a million parents out there as well that are always bashing me, and, you know, <laughs> it's tough, and it's they're the ones that stand out. Like, I think we like to focus on the bad stuff, yes, you know? And, yeah. you know, you get a hundred good ones and one bad one, and that's the that's one that eats sticks. you up. So, I mean, you know. That's an evolutionary thing, actually. It is. Because, you know, as cavemen, if you didn't listen to what the tribe was saying and, and mm -hmm. change your behavior, you were out. So, unfortunately, that stuck oh, wow. around for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. And now here we are listening to trolls on the internet. Exactly. <laughs> what a time to be alive. <laughs> All right, at number four, baby Archie is already making some celebrity besties. Former American Idol judge Ellen DeGeneres had a surprise visit with Prince Harry and Meghan Markle during her summer trip to the UK, and the talk show host revealed that she got to feed and cuddle baby Archie, and she says that he looks just like Harry, too cute. She wanted to say that the couple are really sweet and so down to earth. Guys, would you be so nervous holding the royal baby? Uh, well, yeah. I, I actually know Harry. So I, you went to school I, with him or something, well, right? Well, yeah, kind of. We, we played each other. So I okay. think he'd be... Actually, he probably wouldn't let me. Uh, <laughs> I'd want to do it, but he probably wouldn't He'd be like, no, Ben. Yeah, 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 no, no, no. Have, you, have you been drinking? <laughs> yeah, probably, Would Harry, you have been yeah. drinking? Oh, God, yeah. Probs. Absolutely. If I'm in England, I'm drunk. Yeah. 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 Is it crazy? That's all there is to do in well, England. Well, especially so. these days. It's so yeah. grim over there, right? <laughs> is it crazy to see him as a father now? No, yeah, no, it's it's yeah, because he was uh, he was a bit of a reprobate at best uh, growing <laughs> up, and uh, you know, like they'd find him in bushes and all oh, the rest wow. of it. <laughs> Getting so, a royal scoop. Oh, he was hilarious, but I mean, hats off because he didn't have the pressure that uh, his brother had, That's so true. you know, he could be that. And and I think that you know, he we he sort of proved to everyone that you know he he kind of got away with a lot, but now yeah. he's now he's trying. Well, and, and you know, you'll never be king. Yeah, you can exactly. Do whatever you want, right? I'd but rather I... be him than than his brother. Totally, him, to if be only honest. for the hairline. Yeah. I'm sorry, that was exactly. really mean. <laughs> We're gonna move on from there at number three. Yeah, but he's a ginger, so... Um. <laughs> a ranger, we'll say. And number three, Carrie Hart and Pink's daughter Willow Sage is emulating her superstar mom with her new haircut. On Sunday, her dad revealed that the eight-year-old had part of her head shaved by posting a very cute photo, captioning the post, it's better to be your own self, and if anyone has a problem with it, tell them politely, move on. So, guys, 
What is the craziest hairdo you've each ever had? Dave, I know you've got it. Yeah, yeah for me, it was definitely in college when mm -hmm. I decided that I needed to go blonde. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bleached my hair blonde, mm -hmm. and it was... Was it something like that? It looked just like that. <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> Cannot believe that you guys pulled that up from the internet, but really? yes, that's how I looked. I, I would have thought you would expect nothing less from us. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, wow, the 90s, you guys, I'm telling you. I don't know. What I a think, time to be alive. I think you were rocking it, personally. Really? I think you look fabulous. I look like Smash Mouth. I don't know what that, <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking. They had their day. Ben, what about you? What's the craziest um, do you have well, ever Well, I've had? always had kind of crazy hair, but I, I went blonde, and then, um, oh. and then obviously it went black and white. <laughs> and I gave myself a mohawk, so oh, I had wow. a black and white mohawk. That sounds uh, like a lot was going on there. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I was very troubled at We're, the time. <laughs> We're going to need you yeah. to post a picture to Instagram story <laughs> of that one. At number two, Kim Kardashian West got emotional about her health on last night's premiere of Keeping Up with the Kardashians. She complained about swollen hands, wrist pain, and feeling that she was tired and nauseous. Now, after a pregnancy test came back negative, the reality star scheduled a doctor's appointment where tests revealed that her antibodies are positive for lupus and rheumatoid arthritis. Kim wasn't the only Kardashian dealing with health issues as Courtney also took a trip to the doctor in order to address her hair problem. The reality star got plasma injections to fix a bald spot on her head. Dave, uh, what are your thoughts on this? Is it good that they're opening up? Do you think that some of the health issues they're experiencing are caused by the stress of being reality stars and all that comes with it? Well, we all know that stress has, you know, a bad impact on your health no matter what you're going through. Mm. But millions of Americans across the country deal with similar problems like this. Yeah. I think that it's amazing that the Kardashians continue to be so open about these things. Lots of stars don't like telling all their secrets, and they have kind of made a whole career about keeping... Uh, as uh, as transparent as they can possibly be about all their things. Totally. It's always beneficial to hear it, to see somebody else going through it, and to recognize that it's not that hard and you can get past it. So. Yeah, and maybe you discover remedies that you didn't know existed. Yeah. We saw Chloe last season with her terrible migraines. Right. So, yeah, I mean, hopefully they're doing a good service yeah, to for everyone. Sure. And at number one... Love and hip-hop alum Cardi B had some frank words for her Instagram followers over the weekend after some criticised her for going under the knife. According to Cardi, the internet is filled with a lot of natural body women who criticise other women who have chosen to get plastic surgery. She went on to say a woman shouldn't go after another woman's looks regardless of whether or not they've been cosmetically enhanced. I couldn't agree more, but guys, what do you think? As men... Well, just as humans, do, like, do you think that it's ever okay to be like, just because I've chosen to have my body look this way, it's not okay that you've done something else? What do you think, Ben? I've been taught not to talk about it or, uh, or think about it. Wise really. words, yeah. man, right here, right here. I, if I had the money, I wouldn't look anything like this. That's what I would say. You I would, would look like the blonde guy from I the picture. I would look like that blonde guy again. I'd be young. I'd have perfect everything. Yeah. I mean, I just think, yes, you have the money. Spend it. Do what you want to do. I'd be happy. Who cares? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I'd be pissed if people shamed me for spending thousands of dollars on exercise classes. Like, what yeah. is the difference? Like, you have to do what you want to do in order to feel good about yourself and everyone right. else can just shut the F up. The biggest takeaway for me is that Cardi B is the clap back queen. Yeah. She's hilarious on social media. You should definitely follow her. She I know. really just serves the haters up. Oh, my really? Yeah, good. She's good. yeah, yeah. She's, she's good. really good. My dream is for one day that she will be on this couch. Of she course, I won't know what to do with myself and I'll just be like, I'm not worthy. <laughs> well, look, Chef Ben, let's talk all about you because you're back. You've made your return to Below Deck uh, just recently, but it seemed that you kind of struggled to get your sea legs back a little bit. So how hard was it for you making the return? Um, yes, I'd been out of the loop, out of yachting for a while. It yeah. was... It, it was a shock. I, I'll, I still remember that moment going onto the boat and just thinking, what the hell, what's what going on? Yeah. I mean, although the, the crew were very nice, I was... I was they were they seemed very young, you know. So well, I they think, are, aren't they? Well they are, yes. And I, I you know, I, I I'm I'm you know, I'm thirty eight now and so mm -hmm. I I just feel that, you know, it was it was definitely a younger man's job. Right. And um and I'm happy with my my new lifestyle on land. Okay. Uh, Half the burners but, didn't work. It yeah, felt like they were trying to sabotage it. It was it was <laughs> it was shocking. Um there was really bad juju going on there. Hopefully yeah. by the end of the season I cleared it out. And, uh, up, just because, you know, uh, 
as an art, I consider chefs to be artists and to have a clear mind and clean refrigeration and organization, mm. just it really reflects on the plates. It's, it's hard to, to, to explain, but I really notice the difference. Yeah, and also when your charter guests are spending so much money to be there, yeah. like they yeah, expect yeah. a certain level, exactly. which obviously they weren't getting when Mila was there. But uh, what is it like when guests are displeased with what it is that you played up? Because last mm. week, it, didn't, it seemed like no matter what you did, the guests weren't happy enough with like the temperature of the food. So like, what right. do you do in that situation? Well, I mean, if you actually noticed uh, when Sandy asked the lady how the food was, she hadn't touched it. Yeah. Right. Well, so, well, yeah. No, but <laughs> I mean, she had. Drunk. First off, she says it's fabulous. Right. And then she says, oh well, actually, never mind. I haven't actually tasted it. Right. So, and then she says it's cold, but but it could have been 10, 20 minutes. Yeah, you know, exactly. In a windy, in a cold, windy yeah. area on the boat. So, I mean, ten bottles of savvy B. Right, but so. but the food temperature is an issue, and um, and and we're looking to resolve that. Okay, all right. One of the ladies said that the chocolate cake was gross, and I think that she must have been crazy. Yeah, well, that's my my yeah, ruling. Her taste buds were just yeah. obliterated. Well, that's so. the thing, and um, and and so I took it upon myself to actually dish you know to plate that out and I had Captain Sandy coming in and uh, obviously Asia was eating it as well on on film and uh, yeah. and uh, and I ate it and it was bloody good so I it mean it looked amazing so I don't, <laughs> no, I don't know it, what was, it was really good I, I, mean, was, I was really how, proud of how it can you ever go wrong with chocolate cake come on I know <laughs> I know like, well look in the past you've had some flings with some of the stews you've been Couple. a little bit of a naughty boy never mind yeah. so this time did you purposely stay away from all of that seeing as it hasn't always worked out to your benefit in the past well I mean yeah, I mean maybe, but I was I, I was okay. I was I was very busy. I, I obviously had my work cut out. It was a nerve-wracking experience, mm -hmm. and uh, which doesn't do much for the libido. So. Um, <laughs> So yeah, essentially, I just stayed out of trouble. Okay. And, although I didn't really have my sights on anyone. I right, mean, right. Well, as you said, they're all very young. I mean, it would have been pretty gangster had I managed all of that and had a fling. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong, but uh, so maybe I'm not it. that cool. Right. <laughs> well, you and your former below deck castmate Keith <laughs> Chastain had yes. a, a little bit of a history together, and I saw that last night in New York. You guys were spending some time together. No, we didn't sleep together. You didn't. I, I wasn't <laughs> even going to go that what direct. He was <laughs> Okay, good to know. But, joking, but is I'm there joking. any chance for those fans that oh, ship the two of you together that there may be some romance in your future? Look, Kay is a really good friend, and uh, sometimes really good friends get really drunk and do really inappropriate things to one <laughs> another. Um, have we done that? I think we have. So maybe we've closed that chapter. All right. But, uh, but it's still open. So ooh. she was here last week and had lovely things to say. Uh, about she's a lovely girl. I, she's true. one of my best friends, and uh, we, the thing thing is, is we're so similar. We're both very strong-headed with Capricorns. We're of, you know, a little greater than average intelligence, maybe. So we know <laughs> right. how to, so we know how to <laughs> wind each other up and Fuck. press right, each right. other's well, buttons. Well, plus you're British, so you yeah. know how to just oh, like, yeah. really We like, can you know. annihilate each yeah. other. So. Uh, <laughs> That to me sounds like sexual tension, but what do yeah, I know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, everything goes back to Watch sex. Watch this face. Yeah. <laughs> Especially when, yeah. you know, your options are limited at sea. But anyway, yes. Ben, thank you so much for joining oh, us well, today. Oh, thank you. It was Cheers. an absolute pleasure to meet you. you and too. glad that you've returned to the franchise. Hopefully you'll stick around for um, yes. a little longer and back. not disappear on us again. And Dave, thank you as always for being our Bravo expert and just all-around oh, wonderful pleasure. friend of the show. We love you. Make sure you tune in to see Chef Ben on Below Deck tonight on Bravo at 9pm. Eastern. Right now it is time for us to take a very quick break, but when we come back, I will be joined by the hosts of MTV's new show, Ghosted, Rachel Lindsay and Travis Mills. Don't go anywhere. Are you surprised that Dell has ghosted Julia? No, revenge is sweet. Karma is a bitch. Welcome back to Reality Check. I am now joined by Travis Mills and Rachel Lindsay. They are the hosts of MTV's new investigative real reality series, Ghosted, Love Gone Missing. Welcome to the two of you. Thank you Thank for having you. us. Thank you. We're happy to be here. Yeah, now this show is, uh, it's definitely an interesting concept, but before we get into it, why don't we pr uh, play a little preview of it?
We're traveling the country looking for love gone missing. I cannot move on. You ready for us to track down your ghost? We'll investigate the clues and follow every lead to track down the ghost. Who's McKenna? It's the girl that Jordan was seeing for a little bit. Found her. You found her really quickly. That's what I do. <laughs> So, unfortunately, ghosting has become more and more prevalent in yeah. the dating world. So, why was now the right time for a show like this to be made? I think it's one of those things where when we were approached about the show, I thought, this show doesn't already exist. Mm. Just because it's such an epidemic that goes on when it comes to dating. And yeah. so, for us, I know we both have our own personal stories on both sides. Uh -huh, of, uh -huh. both, sides yep, yeah. both sides of the coin, yeah, both sides of the coin. My next question's coming up, <laughs> just to prepare you for it. So I think we were just like, you know what, we know what it's like, we know what it's like to be affected by this epidemic, and we want to help people. Yeah. And we, Travis has a podcast, and I was a guest on his podcast, and we talked about it, and we were both like, wait a minute, we've both been through this thing yeah. before. So now you can be of service to others. Yeah, and like anyone that, you know, we talk to about the premise of the show or what we're out here doing, everyone has a ghosted story. Mm -hmm. One way or another, they're like, either they're embarrassed and they're like, oh my God, I totally ghosted someone, you right. know, don't come looking for me. Or they're like, I got ghosted two weeks ago, yep. and I still don't know what happened. And so it's so relevant to right now yeah. and this, you know, age of social media, that we feel like, you know, it's perfect time. Definitely, definitely. Can you tell us about some of the tools that you guys use in order to track down the ghost? Social media. <laughs> I was gonna say, Instagram, yeah. Twitter, yeah. Facebook, Snapchat. I'd say the farthest we've gone um, is we use Cash App. What's uh, that? Venmo. Uh, well, no, Venmo. Venmo. We oh, use Venmo. Venmo. Yes. That's brilliant. We use yes. Venmo. Uh, that has been like the most left of center kind of technique that we've kind of delved into. Yeah. But, you know, a lot of it is talking to friends yep. Yep. and family and exes. Um, I mean, it does like really surprise me, to be honest, that people think they can get away with ghosting in this day and age because everyone has such a digital footprint. Yeah. How do you think you're going to get away with it? Especially now with you guys on the case, yeah. you cannot. Um, but what's something that was like the most surprising thing that happened on the show or that you discovered? It whilst in the process of tracking down these people? I, each story is different, and that's why you have to tune in every week to see it. Mm. But I think how emotionally invested we were in mm. these stories, and that's, that's what we want people to see when they're watching it. This is very real. These people have been haunted, for lack of a better word, by the person who's ghosted them. Yeah. And each episode took me by surprise just in why the person decided to ghost, yeah. how they ghosted them. Um, it's It gets deep. And you get to see, I'm guessing, like the real ramifications of what happens when someone ghosts you. Because when someone actually has the decency to sit you down and say, you're great, but I just don't think the chemistry is right, you're left with like few questions. Whereas when someone just disappears, you go over every conversation in your head. Well, if I hadn't have said that, if I hadn't have worn that, did I hit some bad lighting to yeah. quote Cher from Clueless? So you must really see the emotional devastation that these people are feeling. Our first conversations, you know, with the haunted, with these people that reach out to us is exactly that. They're, they're going through the timeline of the relationship like what did I do wrong could it have been this could it have been this mm -hmm. uh, in reality it's never what the person originally thinks right. but we get to see firsthand how it affects these people moving forward into new relationships mm -hmm. uh, you know going into work into how they behave online some people they can't really move on with their life until they get these things and answered. And get the closure. Yeah. Yeah. And so, uh, circling back just a little bit, what is some of the common, most common excuses you guys have heard for the reason why people have ghosted? Ooh. They vary. It's, I mean, you have some people who just do it because they think it's easier and it's drama free. Right. Then you have some people, because I don't want to give too much away, who do it for very specific reasons. Okay. We have one case where someone just did it for fun, you know? What? Like serial ghoster, like no remorse, no conscience. Oh, um, and so you have stories like that, but then you also have stories where, you know, the person who ghosted was going through a lot of personal trauma, mm -hmm. needed time to, you know, reevaluate themselves. And, you know, there's a happy ending out of it. So those cases, we feel good about okay. doing, what, yeah. doing what we do. And I'm really hoping that this provides a social service as well so that people watching can actually see the, the really negative and ongoing emotional effects you can have by not treating someone the right way. And maybe you guys are going to actually help to sort of, like, slow down the epidemic. That's the goal. That's, yeah. Right? I mean, you guys are doing a public service. So thank you as someone who has been ghosted. But I have to ask you, have you guys been ghosted before? And be honest... Have you ghosted someone? Well, I'll, I'll start <laughs> okay, first, start. okay? I have been ghosted. Um, long story short, I was dating a guy who ended up having a child while we were dating, took him back anyway, um, continued to date him, found out he was still in a relationship with the mother of the child. 
Um, still took him back, and then eventually I called him one day, and his number was disconnected. Oof. Oh man, like, I'm sorry, Rachel. And it was before social media was huge, yeah. so there was no way to figure out what happened. And it wasn't until another two years that I found out why. And I needed that closure. Yeah, I didn't even realize that I needed that, but I hadn't really moved on mm -hmm. to another relationship, a serious one, yep. until I could close the door on that one. Yeah, sometimes that's what it is. Like, it doesn't matter how many years have passed, like, you just need to really be able to, like, close that chest, lock mm -hmm. it. So. Uh, I've been on the other side uh, <laughs> of the spectrum. Uh, I was 18, okay. and I was talking to this girl online, mm. uh, and she was from Canada. She needed a citizenship in the US, so somewhere along the line, I was like, hey, let's get married. Without meeting her and anywhere. You were 18. I was 18. I was, you know, having fun. Uh, and she was like, cool, uh, you know, I'm super down. Let me know when you want to come to Vegas. I'm like, whenever you send a plane ticket. I checked my email, she sent me a plane ticket, I got on a plane. Uh, when I got there, it's kind of a hybrid story, I got catfished, I got catfished a little bit. Okay, okay. So when I'm with her, I'm like, what do I do? Um, so I say, hey, let's get just married tattoos. Okay. Instead of actually getting married without all the paperwork right. and divorce and stuff like that. Um, so I went first, I got my palm tattooed. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> as soon as I'm done, I go outside, I call my best friend, I'm like, hey, you need to come pick me up. I'm like, call me back in 10 minutes, say there's a family emergency. I go back inside, he calls me, I'm like, oh my God, come get me. Mm -hmm. She's getting the tattoo, my friend gets there, I get in the car, I drive back, two weeks later, covered it up, never talk to her again. Wow. Did so, she make an appearance on this episode, on this season not, of Ghost? Not yet. Not Thank, yet. Thankfully not. <laughs> um, but she if might. you're watching this, she might. I apologize. Like, I was 18, yeah. you know, I was, uh, I was immature. Look, I didn't have, you know, the communication skills that I have now. I didn't have, you know, consideration for other people's feelings like I have now. So yeah. it's definitely a growing moment. Mm -hmm. Not my proudest uh, moment. But you've admitted but it. I've, oh yeah, full circle. Yeah. Uh, and you know, um, I've, I've definitely learned from it. And, and you so can relate. Oh, 100%, I, I'm in there, I can I can get in there. Yeah. And so now, knowing what you know, you would never do it again. Never right? do you it again. always have the conversation, it's no matter how way, you, you know, it's way easier to have a hard conversation. Yeah, that's so true. And then, Rachel, I have to ask you, because going from someone who was looking for love and then successfully found it, mm -hmm. to helping people who thought they had it and then lost it, what's that been like for you? I think it's, you know, people, it's weird doing the bachelor, bachelorette, people think you're a, an expert when it comes to relationships. I'm not. I mean, I just told my ghosting story about how I continue to take this guy back, yeah, even geez. though all the red flags are waving in front yeah. of me. I, and I, it was a growing process for me, really throughout my 20s, to get to where I was and what you saw on the show. And so I think that when I'm doing Ghosted, you can see that I can relate to people because I know what it's like to go through some of these relationships. So yeah. I wouldn't say that I'm an expert, but I, I can definitely understand both sides of the equation. You can both be empathetic for yeah. reasons. Oh, definitely. So sure. I think that makes you, you have to be. Perfect host for this show. I'm really excited to tune in, and it was such a pleasure meeting both of you. you. So, so congrats on the new gig. Thank and you. Uh, guys, make sure you tune in to the premiere of Ghosted Love Gone Missing Tuesday, September 10th on MTV at 9 p.m. Eastern. In the meantime, don't go anywhere because when we come back, we are chatting with Team Mum 2 newcomer Jade Klein. It's like a big old MTV Love Fest up in here today. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned. I don't understand. This is my house and he's been abusing me. I'm so f mad right now. Welcome back to the show. I'm now joined by Jade Klein, who's gone from MTV's Young and Pregnant to Teen Mum 2, which premieres tomorrow night at 8 p.m. So, Jade, thank you very much for being here today. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited. Well, good. So, how are you doing? How's motherhood and how's Chloe? Oh, my God. She's good. She's about to be two years old mm. on the 18th of this month, so we're planning her party, and she's so smart. Like, I don't know anything about kids except my kids, so, like, when <laughs> I bring her around other kids, people are like, she is so smart. And That's I'm like, cool. oh, I, don't, I was like, I, I guess she's like she knows all the letters of the alphabet she can count to 10 she talks in full sentences like when she's in the mood too yeah but yeah she's doing really well and she is adorable so what, what will the theme of the second birthday party be have you planned that yet yes it's actually the banner set is gonna say holy macaroon you're two and it's like a macaroon tea party kind of like classic Aww. like nice very um very elegant. Elegant, yes, yes. I love super, that. super cute. I love it. And that. I've never seen it anywhere. I was like, I've never even heard of someone doing that theme. So I was like, that's yeah. super unique, like cool little theme. That is, it's very original. Mm -hmm. I like that. And now that Chloe is almost two, looking back, are there things about pregnancy or motherhood that you wish that someone had told you 
uh, that you now know and that you would like to share with expectant moms? Oh, I feel like I'm always one of those people that kind of empathizes with everyone else. And I feel like I let a lot of everyone else's kind of troubles get onto my plate and my shoulders. I feel like I really, I always worry about other people and I feel like I wish I would have known now to like worry about you and your kid. Like sometimes you have to be selfish and mm -hmm. it's totally okay. And that's normal. Like don't let other people's issues you know, come on your plate, like yeah. when you already have a lot going on. Exactly, at the end of the day, all that matters is that little person that right. you created, right? Mm -hmm. Now, how have you been um, finding it balancing being a mom and also being a hairstylist? Have you found it quite easy to to do both? Yeah, I feel like, I always say that like diamonds um, are made under pressure, you know, you have to have, I have to be under pressure, I have a lot of stuff to do, I stay busy, I feel like it's good for me to stay busy. I have a lot of stuff that goes on in my life and I feel like if I wasn't busy, I don't even know what I would do. I feel like right. I, I'm about to finish school, actually. I graduate in about two months and I go full time, like almost like 40 hours a week. Wow. And then I have her when I'm not at school. So Monday through Friday, I go to school. And then any other time, it's just me, like, I got my baby, me and Chloe. I feel like yeah. it's not, it's more, I know it's like a mother and daughter, but I feel like we're like friends too. That's like nice. we're like buddies. Like I like enjoying my time with her. Like we have fun together. Yeah. She's a funny personality and she is literally just like me. Like I see it all the time. I see like the things she does. I'm like, oh my gosh. I think that's really great as well because you're setting such a good example for her that education is important and, and that working is important. Yeah. yeah and, exactly. And it's normal to see your mother going out and working. And, you know, I feel like a lot of people expect moms to be at home, you know, Know, barefoot pregnant in the kitchen cooking all the time <laughs> right, and I'm yeah. like that is not me at all like I feel like I wouldn't even have another child until like I was probably in my mid-30s because right. I'm like I have so much to do and I want my kid to watch me like hustle and work and watch me grow and watch my career grow so when she gets older she's like that's normal like yeah. mommy did it like I'm I'm gonna do that I think that's wonderful you have such a mm -hmm. good head on your shoulders can you uh Tell us a little bit about any of the drama we can expect from the current season or from the new season. Oh my gosh, uh, it's literally, it's way different than young and pregnant, that's for sure. I yeah. mean, there's a lot of drama, a lot of ups and a lot of downs and um, I don't wanna do any spoilers, so I'm like, you guys are just gonna have to see because it is it is it's a roller coaster, it's a that, roller coaster. that's for sure. Yeah. And you yeah. replaced Janelle. Uh, so what was that like for you? I mean, I wouldn't consider myself like a replacement. I don't really like to say that, but I mean, I don't really have an input on it. I don't keep up with any of the other girls' stories. I never watched Team Mom before. Right. So, I mean, I just kind of keep to myself. I have my own stuff going on, so I don't really worry about anybody else's story or what's going on. Like, I got my own stuff to worry about. Right, like. of course. And then uh, what about Sean? Are we going to see him step it up this season? Um, well, I mean, you know, Sean is... Chloe's dad and always want him to be around and do yeah. what's you know best for him but at the end of the day he's his own person I'm my own person so I mean my only focus is Chloe and being a good mom and you know focusing on my career yeah I mean if there was one takeaway from this season of tea, like a positive takeaway mm -hmm. that you would want your fans or just viewers of the show to, to to take from from this experience what would you want them to know um it's okay to make mistakes it's I feel like what makes you a good mom and a good person is you learn from your mistakes and you let every lesson, negative or positive, be a learning lesson and take it, I mean, take it all in for what it is. So I feel like I've grown since, you know, young and pregnant first season to now where I am. I feel like, like all the people that watch and all my fans that watch, you know, I see it all online on social and they're like, oh my God, like you're such a good mom. You've grown so much. And I feel like that's what's important is don't dwell on the negative. Let that be a lesson for you mm. and grow and kind of, you know, aspire to be a better person than when, than you were yesterday. I think that's good advice because we talk a lot about mommy shamers here on the show because mm -hmm. I mean, you guys just get it, not just you, but anyone that's a oh mom my God, in the public eye, like just gets it in Oh space, yeah, I'm so. literally, I go to school and people are commenting like, where's your kid? Where is she? Where is she? I go out to eat and people are like, where's your kid? Right. Like anything you do, it's like all of a sudden you're a, a bad mom, like you're under a microscope all the time. And I'm yeah. like, who cares about mom shamers? Like, do, do you? I yep. mean, if you put your kid first, every mom deserves to have, you know, a day out or kind of a day totally. to themselves. Like, that's totally normal. I don't yes. know what it is. Nowadays, everyone's like, shames moms for literally everything. Which for is, being away from the kid for five minutes. Really, which is weird. Yeah, weird. it is. <laughs> like, <laughs> everyone, I still have my own identity. I'm like, I'm a mother, but I'm Jade, too. Yes. I'm my own person. So, I yeah. mean, I don't want to lose my identity with being a mother. I feel like there's, you can be a mom and you can still be you, too. Absolutely. And it sounds like you have, honestly, like, such the right attitude about it. So, I want to say congratulations and good Thank luck you. with the studies and happy almost birthday to little Chloe. 
I hope that her birthday party is everything that you and her are hoping for it to be. Yes, same. I'm excited. Excellent. Well, it was so nice to meet you. It was nice to meet you too. And uh, right now we're actually going to check in on our Twitter question of the day because we want to find out what your favorite moment was from last night's Keeping Up with the Kardashian season premiere. And with 44% of the votes, you said Tristan confronting Kanye with no audio. That was the winner. Are you a fan of the Kardashians? Uh, yeah, I watch them sometimes. Yeah. Which Kardashian is your spirit animal? Are you a Chloe? Are you a Courtney? Are you a Kim? Um, I like Courtney. Yeah. I like her a lot. Yeah, she, she seems to be a really good mom, and she also, like, is herself, too. Very I true. Very true. Really good. Well, look, it was an absolute pleasure, as I said, meeting you. And don't forget, you can uh, cast your vote for our daily reality check poll by checking at people on Twitter Monday through Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern. Uh, you can catch the premiere of Teen Mom 2 tomorrow night, which is Tuesday, September 10th at 8 p.m., where you can see Jade. And uh, that's now been dubbed Teen Mom Tuesdays. You guys have your own yes, night. That's very cool. So uh, thanks for coming in and come back anytime. Thank and you. Best of luck with everything. We are going to take our very last break of the day, but make sure you stay tuned for another moment in reality TV history when we get back. Welcome back to Reality Check. I want to say a big thank you to all of my guests today. Chef Ben, Dave Quinn, Rachel Lindsay, Travis Mills, and Jade Klein. What a big show we had. Remember to follow at people on Twitter to watch the newest Reality Check episode. That streams Monday through Thursday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern. All right. It is time for another reality history moment to close us out for today's show. And today's is a little gem from Abby Lee's Dance Company. I am Lindsay Rodriguez, and I will check you tomorrow. Kelly, we don't want you to go. The girls, do you, you guys well, don't want to go. Obviously, she wants someone who has never danced here. Take both of my kids' place. Yeah. In this 2014 episode of Dance Moms, Kelly thinks Abby wants to replace her daughters in the next competition. You, you just said. sit here and say that my daughter looks miserable, so maybe we should put Kalani in her place. No, Abby denies it, but Kelly bad. won't let it go. No, I never said yes, that. Yes, you most certainly did. No, I didn't think that. Let then, it. Kelly finds out Abby is all buck and plenty of bite. Girls out the room. Yeah, you winning. Kelly and Abby's brawl is one of the great moments in reality history. And remember, it's not polite to play. In my face. 500 pound hog pretending to eat me.